Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're going to talk about the approaching autumn and that we're going to begin to focus more on root growth and less on top growth. And it's important to adjust to a root-friendly fertilizer formula. It's a great time to start splitting your spring and summer flowering perennials. We'll explain how. If you've ever grown a dwarf Alberta spruce, you have probably heard about spider mites. We're going to discuss how to control this destructive pest. It's not just about the spruces with an insect problem. It's time to apply an insecticide on your lawn. In our last segment, we're going to talk about my bumper crop of basil. (laughs) (laughs) Some people have problems with zucchini. (laughs) We're going to tell you how to make infused oil, compound butter, and pesto Mm, and more. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, and we are back in the garden, and yep. until now, the plants preferred a higher nitrogen fertilizer, didn't they? They did. You know, and and you really need to change over now. Um, with the autumn coming, what happens is that the leaves, they, the plants want to go to bed. Mm-hmm. It's time to just <laughs> really, well, last week, right, we talked oh, yeah. about how that there's so yeah. much less sunlight right. today there as is. compared to just a week ago or a week before that mm-hmm. or a week before that. That's right. And that we really are calling plants, and we talked about birds, birds yes. that uh, they're being called into a, a different yeah. time of the year. That's right. So... Switch your fertilizers Mm -hmm. over to something that is less high in nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Um, Nitrogen, again, is that thing that's going to force your plants to grow leaves, to to do the the whole photosynthesis thing. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's not the time for that. It's root growth. Mm -hmm. Plants are all shifting to getting root growth. So that includes indoor plants, too. Oh, wow. How about that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and that... Naturally, right now, you may have noticed that some of the lawn fertilizers have a zero phosphorus uh, oh, on yes. their fertilizers. Yes. What's, that, what's going on with that? Well, you remember how we learned, right? Uh-huh. NPK. NPK, yes. Up, I, down, up all down, around. down, all around. Right? Up, mm-hmm. down, all around. Well, it, it turns out that the phosphorus was causing some problems. Uh. Yeah, that... that it, it was runoff concerns and that there was algae bloom that was mm-hmm. happening, at, especially Chesapeake right. Bay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that has gone to zero phosphorus fertilizers. Wow. But 
in the fall, right. you can find some fertilizers because it's all about the roots right. that actually has phosphorus in it. Okay. So the spring mm -hmm. may have been all zero phosphorus, but now any of the starter fertilizers right. and for your lawn, you'll notice that. Mm -hmm. And I'd continue that with your house plants, even your bedding wow. plants that you're trying to get through okay. into the frost. Yeah, right. keep, yep. feeding, keep feeding, it. but feed them yeah. something different. So, so what happens to um, to the actual phosphorus if you need it in the plants? Are you going to go specializing on that? Yeah, and you can switch to an organic because okay. a lot of times on organics that those numbers right. where in inorganic, now we're getting into chemistry, right. the inorganic fertilizers always had a higher amount in the numbers. But when you okay. go to a organic, those numbers, instead of being... 25 are six. Oh wow and so you Big can job. but they also are organic so you can get the phosphorus that you're looking for and they re, they release slow because they're beginning to decompose and okay. it's not the same I guess, it's mm. not really the it's the That's, same it's not the same oh, okay similar to like a slow release fertilizer right but you get it because it has to break down rather than it being a you know, chemically controlled mm -hmm. release. Mm -hmm. I got you. So, right. um, your lawn, your mm -hmm. neighborhood, mm -hmm. your neighborhood, right? Zoysia neighborhood. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, that salesman <laughs> came through and sold Zoysia <laughs> plugs to every one of your neighbors. Uh, they Shame can have on mine. you. I'm trying We're to talk mine. about grass seed, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh that also you, is going to be one of the first grasses because it's a warm season grass warm, yes. it's be go it's starting to go dormant now oh it is yes yeah mm -hmm. have you seen right. ha, has it gone to that yellow that beautiful mm, a little bit golden uh, yeah yellow. it's a little yellowish right now yeah it's not, yeah. not good not good but yeah. it requires again that change from that higher nitrogen, higher nitrogen. to a lower nitrogen higher, okay lower nitrogen and mm -hmm. i said again i keep saying about house plants mm -hmm. a lot of you out there that have house plants that have been right. using like a miracle grow or something uh -oh. that's a mm -hmm. you know a 2020 20 Oof. switch to something that's a little bit lower in nitrogen right. and you're actually going to stop feeding your house plants in another month or so cuz they just completely. they just don't they mm -hmm. just aren't going to need it right they aren't going to need it mm -hmm. so right but again it's something that you need to still do but it you need to Apply it differently. And by the way, if you haven't mm -hmm. applied that third step of your uh, oh, yes. of your lawn program, there you go. Mm -hmm. get it down. Let's go, Ro. Yep. Get it down. Don't wait. Don't wait. No. Don't wait. Mm -hmm. Because now is the time. Now it is, yes. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking about uh, getting your lawn started. Right. Oh, perfect time. Now is the now time. Now is the time. Now yeah. is the time. Just, yes, it's August. And yes, we have threats wow. of heat waves. But it's the perfect time. Perfect. Because nature is calling things into growing roots, right. and that's what we want, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like you're saying, like you're saying, light is is uh, less now. Right? That's right. Temperatures are dropping at night. Yep, mm -hmm. that is. It's, yes, it was very good. Yesterday, beautiful day. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so again, cut back on cut your back. nitrogen. That's, that's that right. first, first number. Mm -hmm. That's that first number. Right. NPK, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, right. potassium. Yes. That's first mm -hmm. number. Cut it back in half, right. at least. Now, these are mi macronutrients, right? Micro uh, macronutrients, yes. yes. Very mm -hmm. good. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, look That's at that. Smart. You're studying. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, we always talk uh -huh. about liking fertilizers that have right. uh, micronutrients, oh, yes. which is mm -hmm. just a uh, secondary, secondary nutrient package that the plants still need, but in they very small it. quantities. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, these are these that's are what crucial. we're talking about. Right. Yeah. These are Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Right. They're the ones that they need in abundance. All right. But mm -hmm. not this time of the year for the nitrogen. That's right. Cut Remember back. that now. Cut back. Okay. Cut, Cut back. back now. Plants mm -hmm. are growing roots. That's right. They're done with their leaves the green, for the most yes. part. You'll notice that maybe some of your trees are going dormant. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's that time that it's the It'll sun change. that is changing and the amount of sunlight that's changing and it's calling those plants into changing. Thank no matter if it's a tree in your front yard mm -hmm. Or it's a ficus, ficus in your living room. There you go. <laughs> That's it. All right. We've okay. got a break coming up, and we'll mm -hmm. be right back right after that. Is your yard and landscape being destroyed by nuisance animal pests? If so, Bonite has a product to solve that problem. Repelzol is an all-natural repellent that works on deer, rabbits, skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, raccoons, 
and many other nuisance animals. It stays effective for up to two months. The all-natural ingredients in Repelzol use smell, taste, and irritation to keep animals away. Unlike other repellents, Repelzol has no unpleasant odor. Repelzol natural formula can be applied to trees, shrubs, perennials, and around edible crops. It also works to prevent animals from chewing on fences and structures. Repelzol is so effective that your satisfaction is guaranteed. Repelzol is available in a concentrate, ready to use, and ready to spray liquid formulations, and in an easy to use granule in a three pound shaker and a six pound bag for spreader applications. Bonide products are family made in America. Look for Repelzol products at these fine stores Animals and Gardens Unlimited, New Egypt, New Jersey, Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Sewell, Washington Township, New Jersey. Butterhoff's Farm and Home Supply, Egg Harbor City, New Jersey. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center for the best selection of summer flowering perennials anywhere. Cone flowers in colors as vast as the rainbow. Reblooming daylilies in all the best varieties. Giant hardy hibiscus with flowers that measure 12 inches across. Make sure to visit our water garden department. Fish plants and water treatments that will keep your pond beautiful and crystal clear. Thinking about a new filter, UV, or water feature? Bloomers has them all in stock. Need to replace that sterilizer bulb? Bloomers carries a wide selection to match your model UV. Fall decorations are starting to roll in. Wind chimes, flags, and more. Bloomers has been selected the best of the best garden center by South Jersey Magazine. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township today. Just 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Find more information at bloomers.com. That's bloomers.com. Well, Julia, we talk about the the sunshine. Yes, we did. Especially here in the fall. Oh, yeah. Um, It's uh, time to start splitting your summer. And I'm sorry, let me back up. It's summer flowering and spring flowering. Spring. Uh, you know, you don't want to do your fall flowering. You don't yeah. want to try to, to split yeah. any of those like uh, autumn joy sedums or anything. Just no. let them go and do their things. Better to split anything that flowers in the fall in the spring. Mm-hmm. But right now, you can go ahead and split those daylilies. They can be done. Mm-hmm. You can split bleeding hearts if you have bleeding, bleeding hearts. hearts. Right. Those are the type of things that you can be can be divided. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. You know? Um, go ahead. Oh, and we have here a hemorrhoid which is a daylily. Yep. And you can split those right now if you like. Yeah. But, well, you're Mr. Daylily. Oh, yes, I am. Your whole yard is, <laughs> is daylilies, oh, right? Yeah. I'm due for a cleanup, too. You keep saying that. I know. When are you going to do it? <laughs> oh, uh, I hope so. <laughs> but here's the thing. Hostas can be split. Hostas, yes. You know, it's time. Everybody has a lot of uh, hostas. Usually they Plenty get to that those. giant clump. Daylilies, sometimes they stop blooming mm-hmm. if you haven't split them. Right. So it's important. Any of those plants that all of a sudden seem like they have, mm-hmm. there's a nice big clump and you get a lot of leaves. Yeah, that's it. They probably need to split yeah, them. Rejuvenation is important. That's right. Yep. Right. It, it just gives them increased vigor. Right. Um, you're going to want to feed them. And what do you want to feed them with? High nitrogen high or no? No, high nitrogen. Low nitrogen. No, yes. Low nitrogen. Mm-hmm. That low. starter type of fertilizer starter, or something right. that's going to encourage root, root growth. growth. Right, because right. you're going to be going into the soil and you're going to split these up. And uh, you want to make sure that you're going to have them started right correctly with the starter fertilizer that we have. The, a Spoma is a great starter fertilizer. Right. You know, and there's so. some folks that don't have room to put any more plants. Yeah, like me. <laughs> like you. <laughs> well, here here's some ideas of what you should do. So, Julio, you have to split your I have your to split. Lilies. Oh, yes. All right. It's past due. How many years have they been in? Uh, past five. Is it over yeah. five? Over five. Yes. Longer than that, probably, isn't probably, it? Probably seven or eight. Yeah, I thought you were closer <laughs> to ten than oh, five. Uh, yeah, maybe. 
it's absolutely time to split them. Mm-hmm. Um, you did get a good bloom cycle on them, though, right? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Cars were stopping in front of the house. Oh, yes, all the girls. No. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, one thing that, that uh, I suggest doing uh-huh. is to share your plants mm-hmm. with your friends and family. Okay. But don't just like give it to them in a trash bag, <laughs> okay? Yeah, well. You can bring it over, but you should plant it for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that great. sharing that plant is something that's nice where they'll see that right. plant and they'll think of you and that right. it's uh, it's a nice friendship gift. Yeah. Na- neighborly. Or family gift. Or neighborly, neighborly, neighborly gift. gift. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. As long as they're not invasive like this. What things that you've got? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, no. Because you have how many how many day lilies? Uh, I planted twenty five. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of day lilies. I know it is. <laughs> a lot of day lilies. <laughs> I got plenty of them. Yeah, for all my neighbors. Yeah, yeah. and but see, that's the thing. I mean, mm-hmm. bring them down to your church. Yeah. Bring them down to you know. That's right. Yeah, you know, it's a little early for bringing them to the school, but you could. Yeah, I could. Um, yes. and then also. Talk to your kid's science teacher. Right. Say, hey, I'm dividing perennials. Do you do you want to ex- mm-hmm. you know go over maybe a section about Learning. root systems and and right. division for for that? Mm-hmm. Hey, it's, Learning hey, it's worth project. A shot. Yeah, that's good. Good yeah. ideas. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah. Um, I particularly like uh-huh. the idea of a memorial garden. Oh yes. Um, Very much. You know, doing where mm-hmm. you know those things are, right. especially with family. Oh yeah. You know that mm-hmm. they have. Uh, they mean, those plants mean, mean something. Oh, yes. Uh, I actually met with a customer a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. and she told me she just bought the house, just bought right. the house, but she pointed to a, a hardy hibiscus. Oh, did she? And said that uh-huh. the owner of the house, that she bought the house from, rather, she, uh-huh. that the previous owner, that she's coming to get it because it was given to her uh, in honor of her son who is in uh-huh. the service. Wow, that's great. So that's wonderful. You know, it's those kind of kind plants of things, that yes. are, are truly special. And we get that a lot at the uh, garden center, man. Yep. A lot of people coming in, they're saying, oh, you know, I'm somebody died in the family. I want to, you know, honor them. Yep. And one just came up the other day and mm-hmm. I gave them the uh, limelight hydrangea. She loved oh, the white. Beautiful. You know, yeah, very beautiful. So she, she, she appreciates that. You know, it's, a, it's a, it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it goes back to dividing these plants That's right. to giving them out to friends and family so that right. you can, mm-hmm. again, give them a little piece of yourself. That's right. And yeah. I'll be having a rejuvenated uh, daylilies. <laughs> That's right. A little piece of you live forever. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's but great. again, it's only the spring blooming That's and right. the summer blooming. You don't yeah. want to do like late things that are blooming now, like yeah. late summer blooming. Late summer now. You don't want to. No. Uh, again, I go back to mm-hmm. some of those plants that you'll see like mm-hmm. you know you're not going to do mums now you're no. not going to do no. you're not going to do any of those things that are in bud mm-hmm. you're going to do things right. that are either past bloom past or bloom, almost right. past mm-hmm. bloom and things that are continual bloomers that have started earlier in mm-hmm. the summer yes you can go ahead and do them that's great but don't try to split something where there's only like two stems it has to be right. a decent sized clump right. don't think that you have to sure. do it every year you, you no. really need to Take like me, I've done look. it, but, but it's been never. never. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Never. That's, yeah, right. that's right. But uh, uh, again, when you do it, you're going to plant that right. division exactly the same way you would do a regular, regular plant. Sure. And right. and how, how would you plant that division, Julio? Well, you want to prepare that. I like to get my soil a little moist before I go in there. Really? Yes. Okay. And um, and then the plant can go in there and... Um, organic matter? Organic right? matter, yes. I put a little bit of uh, bumper crop, okay? Right. And then I uh, just put the plant, the root systems, I like to clean them up a little bit, not much. Okay. But, you know, just so so expose the root hairs? Spo- yes, expose them out a little bit and then uh, plant them, uh, plant a hole wide enough. Right. And then just... How big do you make that hole? I like to make it a little... Like at least twice as big as the root systems, right? Okay, so they're not, cr- it's not crunched in, right? And then I just uh, lay all that soil back in again and make sure that uh, you know it's, it's padded down, right? No air pockets, right? And then I water it uh, heavily. And you want each plant has a crown, so you don't want to put that crown below, below the, yes. the soil line no, you don't. because then you're gonna, it's gonna rot it's out. Rot, yes. So it needs to, it would be better to plant it 
higher, higher yes, than lower. lower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And again, Julio just said eliminating air pockets. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind that you'll have some settling after you water it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So having it up a little bit higher is a good idea. Good idea. Great. All right. Super. So, Wow. If uh, you have any plants that you want to give away, call Julio. That's He's right. I have room plenty. By his day, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right. Yeah. We're going to take a break, and then right after that, we're going to talk about the uh, awful, awful insect, which are spider mites, right oh, after this. Boy. Stay tuned for the Bloomers Garden Minute. The Garden Minute is brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Philadelphia Garden Radio. Find us on the radio dial or on the web at bloomers.com. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden for the Garden Minute. Ah, the summertime, the flowers are blooming, the birds are singing, the garden is yielding its bounty. Yeah, but the weeds are growing and the bugs are feeding and breeding. Next year's crop of insects are laying eggs and the weeds are dropping seeds all over your lawn, landscape, and garden. Those insects plan to host a family reunion right in your yard next summer. The weeds are planning a reunion of their own if you don't control them now. Insects want multiple generation. Weeds too. Taking care of today's insects and weeds means no descendants next year. Don't pass up this opportunity. Control next year's pests now. Get out to Bloomers or your local area independent garden center today for help getting those pests under control. Cancel that reunion and make your home and yard care even easier next year. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden for the Garden Minute, and we'll see you in the garden. Today's Garden Minute was brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Also brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome People. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniels Garden Center, Sumneytown Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, and we're back in the garden and uh, wanted to talk about those warm and cool season spider mites are uh, coming That's out. That's right. We, we're at uh, the cool season are pretty much done, but yes. spider mites, they actually pierce the cell mm. of the wow. green chlorophyll and basically suck it dry. Suckers. And yeah. spider mites are so bad, like other insects, because they have multiple generations mm. and... A lot of times where, you know, people think that they're okay with their, you know, they only see a couple. But what happens is that they're, like, for instance, aphids. Aphids breed, and there are so many, so they get you with numbers. And now spider mites are the same 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 thing. Mm -hmm. They can have up to 15 generations. So 15 15 cycles of, you know, going through another 15 eggs masses that go ahead and hatch and feed on your plants. Wow. Prolific. Um, oh, <laughs> it, it is. It, it, very prolific oh, and wow. that they can kill your plants. And sometimes you won't notice the damage until oh, it's too late. Too late. Wow. That quick. And that's why, I, you know, we're not just talking about spider mites in general. Right. There's the warm and cool season. So, like, the, the varieties that right now, it's like an intersect of the two. Oh, wow. That we want to control both and that the best control is through... For me and uh-huh. those of 
you organic people will get there in a minute mm -hmm. is using a systemic um, inorganic there's an old there's an old chemical that's out there old one. <laughs> it used to be called you remember orthene <laughs> No, remember orthene? Cool, yeah. come on, you're supposed to back me up. Orthene, <laughs> orthene is like older than I am. Oh, wow. But it's still being produced, but it's not called orthene anymore. Oh, they changed the name. Right. Uh, like like okay. Bonide has a systemic uh -huh. insecticide, a liquid, a systemic insecticide, and right. it's basically orthene. Yeah. Works great. Right. And it is systemic, makes the plant poisonous to the insect, cool. and in this case, spider mites. Um, but again, with so many generations... Mm -hmm. I recommend doing three applications, about seven to 10 days apart, apart. and then okay. you pretty much are, are gonna Good. be clean. Covered. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, now, how does somebody know hmm. if they have spider mites? Well, you see it on the, on the plant itself, the, um, the coloration of it. Right, the coloration, mm -hmm. and webs. Webs, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. And, it, and, it's, and it's not, mm -hmm. there's small pockets of webs. It's not like it's like a great big web big that's one. gonna catch Just a little fly. Area. Yep, it's okay. little areas, mm -hmm. little areas on so mostly needled evergreens, but they also attack broadleaf plants as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, what's another product that they can use? What's an organic that can be used to control spider mites? Captain Jack's is great. We we always recommend that. Bonod Captain Jack's. That's you it. Can't go wrong with that one. It is one yeah. of the best organics. Yes, it is. Broadest label. Uh, active ingredient is spinosad. Spinosad, yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent Wonderful. product. Yeah. And again, organic, 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 mm -hmm. and right. safe. Safe for uh, plants, kids, everything. Yep. Also, the all seasons horticultural oil. Right. As always. They, yeah. You know, that that's always good. Mm -hmm. You just have to be careful about how hot it is. It's a mineral oil. Mm -hmm. And it coats the way that it coats kills. It. it doesn't poison them, but it coats, coats them it. so that it basically suffocates, suffocates. them. Uh -huh. So it works on the first generation, mm -hmm. but you have to reapply mm -hmm. to get... The next generation, so right. you have to do several applications of right. it, and you got to make sure you coat up and down, uh, underneath, right, right. underneath the, the plant. Right, you need to do a good job. Spider mm -hmm. mites uh, will kill your Alberta spruce. They oh, will yes. kill uh, all of your needled evergreens. They'll get into junipers. They'll get into, gosh, I mean, everything. almost anything with <laughs> anything. a needle. Um, it really, it really is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Also, it can get into some of your uh, other regular uh, vegetable plants as well. Oh, wow. Then we definitely no recommend problem. organics. So these two, the cool and the warm, are are you saying they're coming together? So this is like well, what a double the, shot. It is. It, what happens is that you you have a they each have a cycle uh -huh. where cool season are starting, um, okay. and but really, it, it's it used to be. That there was red spider mites, but then there's two spotted spider mites. There's there's, there's two, all, different kinds, all different kinds. And that wow. originally they were labeled as one type. It was mites. Oh, mites. Oh, right. But it's really it, more than that. You know, there's more. There's there's yeah. multiple kinds, and and now the generations are split uh -huh. by cool season and warm, warm season. season. Oh, okay. So if you see webs on your plants in say April. You've got the cool season, cool season. spider mite. Okay. You need to, to get in there and, and mm -hmm. spray them. If you see it during the hot season, it's a different type uh -huh. of spider mite. So don't think that the product didn't work. Just think that, oh, guess what? You've got a, a new generation of a different uh, type of plant. Uh, okay. And again, they're prolific, mm -hmm. prolific. So but, that's but, so my, my question is, will, yeah. they, will they both be coming at the same time, or are they just separated? Separated. Oh, okay. Separate. I mean, who, who knows? I mean, yeah. it. it I mean, there's going to be an overlap. Right. There's going to be an overlap. I mean, we're going to talk about right. grubs in a minute, uh -huh. and where you there, do you kill the beetle or do you kill the grub? And like <laughs> right now, it, it's the end what? of the beetle and it's the beginning yeah, of the yeah. new crop of of grubs that are right. you know eating your sod right it's now. That you in hear between. That noise? <laughs> yeah, I got you. So, mm -hmm. if you're doing, you need to really clean them. In a nutshell, right. It is not a bad idea. To just get a hose and sprayer, and that's one of those things that connect to your hose, hoses, right. and just spray your landscape plants right. a couple of times a season. You know, go out Not there and it. just go ahead and and spray them because it will clean up most of the insects that are on them, sure. and you, it will control things like that get out of hand fast, like aphids, like scale, right. you know, and especially like like what? the spider mites. Right, spider mites can be 
you know, there's actually a spider, a mite spray called Mites, Mitex that's Mites. out there. Mm -hmm. um, is that organic? It, it is absolutely organic. There you go. And it, mm -hmm. it does the same thing as the all-seasons oil, but the oh. ingredient's different. Like where mineral oil is in all-seasons oil, oh, yeah. this is cottonseed oil, Cotton clove oil. oil, and garlic oil. Oh. Oils. Oil, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> now we were talking last week about uh -huh. clove oil and how that's it's right, clove, oil. It, clove oil is in their herbicide. That's right. But this is don't get it confused with this. Right. But uh, this is for to control mites. Also thrips. Wow, thrips are that? a pain. Oh, yeah. Thrips are bad in roses. Oof. Bad in roses. So my goodness, get out there, look yes. around, look for for right. webs. You'll see that's small right. webs. Mm -hmm. It's not tent caterpillar if that's it's right. down low. Um, you'll see the caterpillars if it's tent caterpillar. That's right. Um, one thing that I do when customer brings in a sample is I mm -hmm. take a white piece of paper. I That's bounce right. that plant or the piece of the plant onto that white piece of paper. Mm -hmm. right. And, like, you see these little tiny specks, specks. that look like a little piece of dust uh -huh. scurrying on. <laughs> Those are spider mites. Yeah. Those Magnif are mites. You need, you need to, you need to spray. Yeah. Um, I suggest just spraying it anyway because, yeah. again, it cleans up your whole landscape mm -hmm. for things that you're not aware of. Like, right. like you want them a scale. You want them oh, a scale yeah. will decimate, decimate your plants. Completely, yes. So go to your garden centers. We have both the organic yeah. and inorganic. So right. That's Ask, wonderful. Tell them, tell them you heard it on that's Bloomers right. in the Bloomers Garden. Bloomers in the Garden, yes. Yep, go to your mm -hmm. local garden center. They'll Also, if you're having trouble, just bring a piece yeah. of what you're having trouble oh, yeah. with that's we'll on the that. turn. That's on the turn. Don't bring the dead piece. Mm -hmm. Bring the piece that's on the turn right. from good to bad. Right. And then it can be diagnosed by your local garden right. center. Right. So, Beautiful. All right. All right. We got the uh, answer right here. Get rid of them spider mites. Yes. All right. We'll, we'll be right back right after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Are you concerned about mosquitoes ruining your barbecue? How about those mosquitoes that you've been hearing about in the news, which are spreading that Zika and West Nile virus? Let Bonide help you take care of this problem with some easy-to-use mosquito beater products. Mosquitoes love wet, damp areas, standing or slow-moving water. If this describes your property, you need to use Bonide's mosquito beater water-soluble pouches. They will kill the mosquitoes' larvae before they turn into flying, biting adult mosquitoes. If you have biting mosquitoes in your yard, use Mosquito Beater ready to spray. Just attach the sprayer to your hose and spray your lawn, shrubs, and trees. Do you want to create a fog that will get under your deck, around wood piles, or around your shrubbery? Use Bonide's Mosquito Beater Fogger with our fogging liquids. Bonide also offers natural mosquito beater repellents, which are available in easy-to-use granules or in a ready-to-use hose end applicator. Bonide products are family made in America. Find Bonide Mosquito Beater products at these fine stores. Harleysville Ace, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Dublin Agway, Dublin, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Julio, pulled in the driveway the other day, and uh -huh. I saw like 20 birds 20. on my lawn. <laughs> the I was flock like, of birds. What the heck? Was there a sale? <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know what that means. Oh, I've got insects. Yes, you got grub problems. I've got insects. Mm -hmm. I've got insects. Could be grubs. Mm -hmm. More than likely, it is grubs, because yeah, I've got some so. bear patches, too. Oh, you do? Whoa. You know, 
we're 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 very fortunate to to have a special guest with us right now. Uh, Andrew Decker from Jonathan Green is here, yeah, lawn Thank expert. You. He uh, yeah. he is here to talk about grubs. Oh, I, I wish we had something more yeah, exciting grubs. to talk about. <laughs> Everyone's favorite bug yeah. in the dirt. Uh, in the dirt. I mean, I, I I I love grubs because it's you something did. that I can control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Good. right now. So. Anybody that has a uh, Japanese beetle trap, uh, they probably have caught the majority of their beetles. And and you know what my rule is, Julia? Let's here's a yeah. test. Right. What's my rule with a getting a Japanese beetle trap? Give it to your neighbor. neighbor. That's right. There so you they, go. Yeah, I got this for you. <laughs> so you invite all of those Japanese beetles, Over you know, for door. an orgy at their house. That's right. <laughs> and then they go and they land and they feed on their plants. Uh, that's right. You know, so because that's where they attract it and that's what happens. Uh-huh. And the idea is to catch them before they have laid their eggs. Right. But they've laid their eggs. They're starting. They have mostly started to hatch. And now they're started to feed to fatten up for the winter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um Jonathan Green has what product that you recommend for grub control? Well, it's pretty obvious with the name. That's why everyone loves it. It's the uh, <laughs> the grub and insect control. Oh, thank so you. So what that does is it, it helps prevent and kill grubs from the top down into the soil itself. Um, and it'll it'll help deter the, the grubs, and it, it'll also help, uh, you know, as they're growing – because right now we're fortunate. Weather is warm, yeah. and that now is the time to put it down. Don't wait because they're at the surface. The longer you wait, the deeper they go, yeah. and what ha- the product will leach out, and it and it's ineffective by the time it reaches them mm-hmm. if you put it down too early mm-hmm. or too late. Like like say, I, some people want to put it down in March, Ooh. but you know. Well, I get a lot of people that say that they want to religiously put down a grub and insect control in July. And as much as that could work, it's like everything else in the lawn care industry, it's not a science. Right. Um, you got to look for the, the signs, like you mentioned earlier, the bugs, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the birds on your lawn <laughs> feasting on your bugs. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> uh, another one is when you see the beetles flying in the air. Oh, yep. That's yes. a good sign that it's time about to, uh, to put your controls down. I think Japanese beetles are like stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, have you ever walked around Japanese beetle flies into you? Uh, yeah. I, it's like, <laughs> right. what the heck? They're you know? Dumb. <laughs> but they're yeah. prolific, like we talked about oh, spider prolific. mites just a little while ago. Yes. They're interested in breeding and, so, again, subduing the earth, Julio. We you you keep have that recurrent theme, whether yeah. it's weeds or whether it's bugs. Bugs, yeah, they love it. When they're laying their eggs, like they, they're pretty much gone. They're li- they live only about 40 to 60 mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. So think Not of much. it. They're hitting every bar. They're going to look for a date. Uh, they're trying yeah, to, you know, yeah, hook up and right. lay eggs. <laughs> yeah. so, Take advantage I mean, of everything. That's, that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they're trying. doing. And evidently the birds see that they're at my house. Oh, yeah. Because I do have some, uh, some bear patches. Mm-hmm. And, but now they've hatched. The birds are telling me there is something there living now. Mm-hmm. If they were eggs, I wouldn't have birds. And at this time right now, again, we're in that that second part of August. Mm-hmm. So we're in that transition to the yeah. early fall. And, yes, don't write any letters. If you have any complaints that it's still summer, you can send them to Julio <laughs> Zamora. Right, I'll take them. <laughs> uh, again, it, but it's the beginning yeah. of fall based yeah. on the amount of sunlight that we're getting. So plants are getting called into Insects are getting insects. called into, mm-hmm. um, so you probably aren't seeing Japanese beetles feeding, but those grubs are hatching, and the next generation is there. And so, and, a grub, and, and I'm sorry, Andrew, a grub, what does it do? Hatches, and then, well, they like I was about to say, they hatch and they're hungry. Okay. So what the grub's going to do is it's going to feast on your grass roots. Right. And what that does is it damages to your grass to the point where you can grab it by the turf and peel it right up. <laughs> mm. Nice. Uh, not <laughs> nice. They're on my it's lawn. Not, lawn. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people wonder whether they're having an insect control or a disease, disease control. Yeah. And that's one of the, the key things. If you could peel it up, mm-hmm. then you're definitely, you have grubs. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Well, I didn't try to peel it up. Wow. I, I'm afraid yeah. to because... Yeah. 
I, I just, it's going to be a problem. It's mm-hmm. going to be a problem. That uh, the one thing, too, is that they'll feed in your lawn, but they're also in your landscape as well. Mm. I don't think it's listed, the grub and insect control by Jonathan Green. Is it listed on the package for landscape, or is it only for lawn use? No, it's it's listed for both. Really? So yeah, I both. can put this down amongst, like, because they'll eat anything. They'll eat anything. I mean, there's your lawn is a great cover. So a lot of times that's why they're there because the, what happens is the Japanese beetle will fly over your lawn, lay its eggs in your lawn because it's the perfect spot for, for their spawn to reproduce. <laughs> anyway, but uh, they're gonna, you're going to dig holes like when you plant your bulbs and all of a sudden you're going to find these gigantic shrimp-looking yeah, things. Lovely-looking bulbs. Oh, they, they're awful. <laughs> they're, they're awful. And it's that they eat so fast. They eat quickly, so fast. Quickly. Now, I, I do have to say, um, this contains imidacloprid. Imidacloprid has gotten some bad press. Mm-hmm. Um, Julio and I have discussed it. We believe that it, it is a viable product when put down correctly. Exactly. Yes. The concern is about honeybees. The Jonathan Green Grub and Insect Control is not going to affect honeybees as long as you put it down and water it in. You make sure you put it down any if you're gonna if you have a spray, like say that you have a spray in ibuprofen, um, or a drench. You want to use it at night when the bees are in their hive. Mm-hmm. We've mm-hmm. talked to research and development that have said that the the bee problem that they they see is irresponsible people that are using their product, but mostly. They've done tests where they're doing three times the application rate of imidacloprid, and they don't see an issue where it's it's transferring to the flower. It's not; they're not getting it in the flower. Okay. So, I mean that that's that tells that's you. what's happening. So, mm-hmm. uh, again, the granular granular application. There is no better grub control available, um, but Jonathan Green does have an an alternative. You have an organic insect control. We do. And what does that contain? Uh, that It's a lot of oils. I mean, if you ever put that stuff down, the smell will blow you away. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's good for um, surface insects. Okay. It, it doesn't help you with uh, things like grubs below the ground. Okay. So so like chinch bugs and, and, and things like Correct. that? Okay. So you do have an alternative. You do have an alternative. But uh, again, it's just just being smart. What do, what do we say? We have those shirts that we made up, right? Be responsible. Be responsible. B E E responsible. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you, you just have to be smart. But it's time. Now is the time to get the most right. effective control on your grub problem mm-hmm. for spring. spring. And you know what else? You won't have any Japanese beetles either because there'll need there'll be no grubs right. to hatch. That's right. That's the problem. That's it. Mm-hmm. So you're two birds with one stone. Wow. Can't beat that. Can't. No. All right. So we're going to end it here. Yes. We've got another segment coming up. All right. Julio. Uh-oh. <laughs> Some people have problems with too much zucchini. I've got too much basil. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center for the best selection of summer flowering perennials anywhere. Grown flowers in colors as vast as the rainbow. Reblooming daylilies in all the best varieties. Giant hardy hibiscus with flowers that measure 12 inches across. Make sure to visit our water garden department. Fish plants and water treatments that will keep your pond beautiful and crystal clear. Thinking about a new filter, UV, or water feature? Bloomers has them all in stock. Need to replace that sterilizer bulb? Bloomers carries a wide selection to match your model UV. Fall decorations are starting to roll in. Wind chimes, flags, and more. Bloomers has been selected the best of the best garden center by South Jersey Magazine. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township today. Just 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Find more information at bloomers.com. That's bloomers.com. Tired of pale green, weedy results from four-step lawn programs? That's because they don't do anything for the soil. The New American Lawn four-step program feeds the lawn and the soil. MagiCal Plus, a unique soil food that adjusts soil pH, loosens hard soil, and feeds soil microbes is the key difference. 
without the right soil conditions, you'll never enjoy a great lawn. Competitive programs simply don't match up. So feed your lawn and your soil with the new American Lawn 4-Step Program by Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green products can be found at these fine stores. Action Hardware, Wilmington, Delaware. Hokessen Hardware, Hokessen, Delaware. Gaspers Garden Center, Richboro, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are back, landing in the garden, and I had a lot of garlic this year, and I think oh, did you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my garlic could meet, my basil could meet your garlic. That's right. <laughs> and you got a lot of basil, huh? You know, and what I did is I went uh-huh. and I, I put in, I have them in window boxes, too. It's not like I have, like, this <laughs> garden. Box. I I, uh-huh. I went and I tried uh-huh. a sample, a new proven winter variety of basil. Oh, you did? It was awesome. Really? No, I, I, leaves were full and uh-huh. abundant. That's nice. why I have too much basil. But I also <laughs> did some of the other varieties, some of the small leafed basils. I also did the purple leaf basil. Oh, my and gosh. You so, went beyond. <laughs> I did. And, and of course, you fantasize uh-huh. when you're putting the stuff in. It's like, <laughs> oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this with it. I'm going to do right. that. And I can't wait. And I'm going to do this. And, you know, uh, I didn't. No, I have didn't. more basil right. than I know what to do with. So. You are the basil king of South Jersey. I, uh, well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Uh, <laughs> I'd be the only uh, Dutch and German basil king in South Jersey, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> but job. the one thing is uh-huh. that you, I looked up, why. Well, right, so what am I going to do with this basil? Right. I can take it and take some of it, chop it up, uh-huh. and put it in ice cube trays and freeze it. Wow. And then that way, it's suspended into uh-huh. a form where it's fresh. Nice. And I just go and fill up one of those great big gallon-sized baggies full, uh-huh. and I can just plop it in Boom. when I need it. When you need it. Wow, yeah, that's so, a good idea. So I can, th- wow. there's one. There's one right there, huh? Good um, job. You know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that, uh-huh. but one that I am going to do Which is one? I'm going to make infused oil. Oh. Yeah, you like yes. that? Have you ever done it? No, I de- never have. Yep. Yeah, it, it the How's recipe is, is pretty recipe? simple. Oh, is um, it? Take four cups of packed basil, and I have oh, a whole you lot more, more than that. four cups. If you want to try <laughs> it, you can do this. And two cups of virgin olive oil. Uh-huh. Um, you don't want to use uh, extra virgin uh, okay. olive oil because that'll compete too much with the flavor. You just want to use regular um, virgin olive oil. Okay. All right? Mm-hmm. And you go ahead and you combine that in a blender. Mm-hmm. But here's the trick. You d- you're not okay. done. You're not done. You don't you don't just mix it. Oh, that's great. You got to put it in a soft pan and just let it simmer a little bit. Let let it puree over over like medium heat for about not long, 45 seconds. It's almost like oh, flash heating. Yeah. Okay. And then you pour it through a fine mesh strainer into a bowl. Okay. And that I've seen where people have used like a coffee strainer kind of. Right. Maybe you could use cheesecloth. I don't cheesecloth. know about that. Uh, that maybe too through. that'll maybe be too thick, not not yeah. not fine enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just, just let it sit. Right. Then after you're done, you let it just sit for a few hours. Okay. You know, f- three, four hours. Right. Cause you're kind of letting it separate a little bit. Okay. Um, then pour that oil into an airtight container. Right. All right. And, and you stop again, where that separated, you okay. don't want to pour any of that dark liquid that's in there. At the bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that'll be a little bit bitter. Too, too bitter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it, it just again it it will sit and it'll sit. Right. You can use it anytime you're like pasta. Oh, for instance, pasta. I make I make an angel hair pasta. Okay, that uh, it's not oh. quite. This is not pesto, by the way. Yeah, that but it just a little bit of olive oil. Oh, right. Nice. I actually have thrown a little bit of kale kale in with it, mm-hmm. and this oh. oil be fantastic. Oh. 
That sounds great. I think I'm going to have to try that one. Yep. Bread. Bread. Like oh. Really nice bread. Yes. As a dipping. So this is for bread. Dipping. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Like I said, that's the one. That's definitely one I'm going to use. You're going to have to patent this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other one I'm uh, going to do. Which one? I'm going to make a compound butter. Oh. It's a little tougher? I, not really. To no. be honest, it's easier. It's easier? It's oh, easier. Because all, all you do, it, it, it's again, you, you just basically are taking unsalted butter. Okay. Unsalted butter. Mm-hmm. And you go in, you have to take a little bit. Uh, first of all, you have to chop up the basil. Right. And don't put it in a blender. No. Don't put it in a blender. Just chop it up by hand. Mm-hmm. You want um, a little bit of minced garlic. Oh, I like I got garlic. lemon zest. Oh, lemon zest. Yes. Lemon zest, I think, is the key. Mm-hmm. Right. A uh, little bit of pepper. Pepper. Okay. All right. A little mm-hmm. bit of salt. Salt. Okay. Mm-hmm. And all you do is just mix it mix together. Mix it all together. You wow. just mix it all together. And you, to me, uh-huh. I was actually going to give it to you. I was going to yeah. try to make it oh. for today's show. So right. I uh-huh. present you with <laughs> compound <laughs> like, butter, nice. but I just did not have the time. Right. Um, and that you can use it. On anything. On anything. anything. Oh, We're back yeah. to that bread again. Mm-hmm. I, I like bread. bread. Yeah, I know you do. I like bread. I like butter, too. We <laughs> talked about that, right? Yeah, you know, we butter did. cup, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Butter I, man. I, I, I am. Yeah. Um, polenta. I love polenta. Have you tried polenta lately? No. Oh, wow. It's great. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I fry mine. I cut it. I fry it. Oh. You, I don't know. Yo. That's, another, to, that's another show. Yeah, another show. I'll have to get you some. <laughs> you, you, I'll rate you. Right. But again, you can keep it too because mm-hmm. you can freeze it. Oh wow, that's you can great. freeze it. Yeah, I like that. You know, and you're just you're just forming it's forming not, it, yeah. it, and it's easy. It sound it it is. You just get those ingredients. You're mashing them up and putting them together, and that's wow. it. You're done. Look at that, folks. Yeah, basil. So, huh? so real, real easy. Real, real easy. Then the last one, of course, like uh-huh. is the obvious one, is pesto. Pesto. Oh. Okay. Pesto is simple. All right, folks. Pesto. Mm-hmm. But the the difference with the pesto, right. a lot of people are want to put it into like a food processor right away. Right. But the problem is it gets too fine. I want there to be textures in my pesto. Oh, okay. So I I do it a little bit different. Okay. So so I. Take four ounces of pine nuts. Oh wow! Okay, Ooh. and I put it in a skillet. You mm-hmm. you toast them. So you're toasted. doing toasted pine toasted nuts. Toasted pine nuts. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, you can put them, but again, you've got to be put the basil in, but pulse it. Don't go nuts with the food right. processor. That you've got it down to to where there's no difference. Consistency. Right. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, you're you're using pine nuts. Right. Again, p- toasted pine nuts. You're four cups of fresh basil, Ooh. three garlic cloves. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Coarsely grated Parmesan. Ooh. So get good Parmesan good cheese. Parmesan, no yes. craft Parmesan cheese. Right. All right. Uh, lemon zest. Some lemon zest, a, a tablespoon of lemon zest, some olive okay. oil, of course, uh-huh. um, and then some just salt and pepper to taste. Uh-huh. But the issue that I want to just, again, mm-hmm. you can't screw up too bad. It, yeah. Just go ahead and, and give it a shot, but okay. keep it so that it has a little texture in it. Because then right. when you put it with your pasta, it holds on to that pasta. Yes. And it's uh-huh. got it's not like just a green slime that goes over top <laughs> of it. You actually right. can pull the flavors out. Oh. You can taste each other. That's a winner right there. I like that one. Then. So, so that's what to do with your extra basil. Thank you for letting us know all these beautiful recipes. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) It's easy, folks. Just uh, call Len on the hotline. (laughs) There you go. I'll give you the recipes if you want. There you go. (laughs) All right. We're going into a break. Uh, We're we're not going to talk about polenta when we come back. But uh, (laughs) that will save that for another show. That's another show. We'll be right back after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB, and again at 9 
on 610 AM ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-85-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Down by the schoolyard. Right. Well, Julio, oh, wow. down by the schoolyard. Oh, goodness. What uh, was the most important thing you learned from today's show? Oh, so much. It's it's hard to really pinpoint. Come on, but, come on. You can pick uh, one thing out, can't you? <laughs> the grubs. Oh, my goodness. You know, like you got to hit that right. If you don't, you're in trouble for next year. That's right. You know? That's right. That, get that, it out. If that get was one thing I would do from the show. Mm-hmm. You know, spider mites are close, but I put right. your grub control down. Oh, yeah. yes. And, and I want to thank Andrew Decker for coming on. Uh, he's going to be with us next week. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. I appreciate the uh, extending the offer. Well, it's uh, it, it's nice to have one of our favorite companies yes, here. Yes, we represent. love them. Yes, we and do. Then, again, Andrew's going to be here next week. We're going to talk about uh, some grass seed. We're going to talk oh, about wow. fall fertilizer. Oh, so make sure that you join us here in the garden yes. next week. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. The first person to survive Alzheimer's disease is out there. They might even be listening to this right now. Maybe they're waiting for the traffic light to change. Maybe they're daydreaming about a trip they've planned with their family. Maybe they're in a toddler seat, strapped in and wondering if they're almost home. That first survivor is out there, and they're going to hold on to everything the disease steals away. And the Alzheimer's Association is going to make it happen by funding research, advancing public policy, and spurring scientific breakthroughs, and by providing local support right now to those living with the disease and their caregivers, we're easing the burden for all those facing it until we accomplish our goal. Alzheimer's disease has devastated millions of lives, but that's all going to change when we reach the first survivor. But we won't get there without you. Visit alz.org to join the fight.